Hi there guys, welcome to another episode of uh, On The Bank Angling. Back again at March and Lee Pools, uh, my new local venue now, so, uh, well, it won't be for too much longer, but it's, it's probably going to be my last session here to be honest. Got it off to a bit of a flyer, been here 20 minutes, and uh, I'm on the, on the carp and catfish pool again, and uh, it's bank holiday weekend, so lake very busy. I managed to squeeze in on the bottom peg on the end of the wind. So it's very lively because I've been resting it in the water. So. But I'll just lift him up to show you. So there you go. 15 and a half pound of uh, March and the cat and carp fish pool common. Um, lovely fish, but a hell of a scrap. Add it on the choddy against the far margin in my swim. The wind's blowing in and there's been a lot of fish showing down here to be honest. So I knew I was stood a good chance and uh, yeah it's ripped off. Just wondering whether to stay here for the night or move down onto the big carp lake but keep getting fish like this I won't be disappointed anyway so there we go. Get on I'll show you some of the stuff I'm doing as always and uh, yeah just take you with me through the session so there we go. Cracking start on a nice May, May afternoon. Right guys, so uh, like I said, um, I'm here at the top end of the carp and catfish pool at Marchimley and uh, the, it's really busy, the rest, of the, the rest of the lake is entirely full, no other options but actually, well it's proved already because I've had a fish in, within 20 minutes but you know, it's, it wasn't a bad option, you've got the wind blowing in here, blowing nice, you've got a nice non-fishing bank on the far side fish like to patrol up and down there. Um, but I've picked up, I've had a liner on the run that's across there already, there's been a few fish crashing. Where I actually had my fish was down in this bay. Uh, there was some fish muddying up down by the post. Flicked a jolly there. Within 20 minutes it's gone. So um, It's quite shallow down this end so the fight, fights tend to be um, pretty extreme, you know. They don't have any depth to go to so they take you all over the place so it's good fun. Um, but yeah, as you'll be able to see, my rods are just lying on the floor at the moment. That's because I, I'm not sure I'm going to stay on this lake. Um, I was hoping to try and fish for the catfish tonight, but um, unfortunately all the pegs are taken. I don't know if many cats come out down this end. And uh, yeah, so I might go down on the other lake. There's a few swims free down there. Might go down on there and try and see if I can get a bigger carp out for you. I've got plenty of bait. I've got two days, so hopefully can uh, get some nice fish on camera for you. Sorry about the wind. That was a good start though, so uh, I'll keep you updated through the session. Um, if you want to um, know how I tie my choddies and how they work and everything, if you check out the uh, Little Horseshoe video, um, early spring fishing there on our channel, I'll put a uh, card in so you can click on it. Um, yeah, that'll, that'll help you with that. Save showing you it uh, all over again. But there we go. Marchingly 
Peoples back on the Carp and Cat Lake. Alright guys, well it's now about uh, 7 o'clock and um, still haven't set up my bivvy or anything yet because um, I've, I've been just sat by the car thinking about it and to be honest I've got a feeling the fish are going to leave this area even though the wind is blowing in here a couple more anglers have turned up and there's a lot of pressure on this area now. Um, I think there's still there's still going to be chances, of course. Um, there's always going to be fish that hang around. Um, I think, to be honest, I, I really want to get back down on that bottom pool. Um, I haven't had a chance to night fish it since I caught that 23 pound common. And, uh, yeah, I just fancy another one of them. I know, I know there's 20s in this lake, um, but there's not as many as what there are in the bottom. There's a good head of 20s in that bottom pool. Yeah, I really wanted to get on this one and get in a swim with a confident of a catfish, but I think I can always try that tomorrow night. So I may well give this another 10 minutes and move down to the bottom pool. So one rips one and rips off before then and change your mind. Right, so it's eight o'clock now. Sun's just going down nicely um, over over to, on the right side of the screen there. And uh, yeah, I'm down on the uh, big cart big carp lake. Um, a lot of people have been clearing off. Um, there's still a few people down on the windward end to my left and there's one angler up to my right on the top bank. Um, so yeah, the, from speaking to people there's been plenty of fish coming out, people have been catching. I've seen someone catch one down on the windward end um, whilst I was setting up, you know, it's a good sign. I haven't seen any fish out in front of me I mean, I've chosen the middle of the lake because if there's fish coming out all round, I mean, obviously the middle, you'd hope they'd be passing through all the time. And I've put, committed a lot of bait. I've put in probably a kilo of boilies, maybe more. Um, I've got about three kilos with me. Uh, yeah, I've just put a kilo of boilies out there in the middle, just scattered over a large area. I just want to get the fish coming in and grazing with confidence, to be honest. I, I expect they've been pressured over the weekend with big beds of... Um, bait in tight, tightly baited areas. And if I can just scatter my bait round like that, um, they'll come in and assume it's stuff that's just been left and hopefully start clearing up. And I've got two chods either end of that bait. And uh, yeah, hopefully that's what does the business. But yeah, it looks like it's going to be a nice night anyway. Right, good so morning guys. Um, what can I say? Best made plans, you know, and all that hasn't really worked. Um, I haven't had a fish through the night on this lake. Um, I did actually get woken up this morning by a fish trailing a load of line. Um, managed to get the ball of line caught around my hook and uh, pulled it in. Um, so that one's free now, so that's good. Um, but yeah, nothing much happening. The lake's getting quite busy now. It's quite pressured, so... There we go. Um, I'm going to be moving again onto the uh, cat lake. It's always good at this time of year, you know. If you're not catching, you might as well move to get on the fish. Um, this lake has been fishing well the last few days, but um, someone said yesterday that it looked like the uh, fish were grouping up, getting ready to spawn, so... If they may have two things on their mind and the pressure and the change of conditions has probably put them off to be honest. That's my excuse anyway, so yeah. Um we'll see how it goes. I'll give it another couple of hours and uh if I can't get a fish out for you then I've put a fair bit of bait in, so it may be that it takes time for them to come over the top. That's what that was the case last time I fished this lake anyway, so yeah. We'll give it another couple of hours and if not, I'll pack up, nip home, get cleaned up a bit come back because I've got to pay for an extra 24 hours so come back and go to the catfish lake and see if we can get one of them on the bank. Cheers guys, I'll catch up with you then. Right then guys so here we are uh, back on the carp and catfish lake uh, third move of the session and uh, well third swim of the session 
back on here and uh, yeah, hoping to get cats tonight really. Um, recommended this area by the um, the owner. He said uh, quite a lot of catfish come out just off this willow tree here, tight to the island. So uh, whacked a load of boilies in there already. Just got carp rigs out at the moment. Hopefully pick up a carp before dark. I'm gonna make a bait mix for the catfish and uh, yeah, we'll see what we can do. Hopefully catch one with similar sizes to last session because you know they're awesome fish <laughs> when they're that sort of size. There's been plenty of cats coming out, um, a few thirties, and he's even stuck a few more cats in here. So um, I'm optimistic. And uh, yeah, so I've got this this here. My other rod is out just around the corner, just there, just fishing down the side there. In that next room, it may well come across here tonight. Um, I've got all this area to myself, everyone's cleared off now and uh, yeah, I may even put a bait in that bay on the far margin but we'll see how it goes until dark, I'll keep you updated as always I've just got chods on at the moment so nothing new to show you if I come up with any new rigs or anything uh, that I start using I will show you I'll show you my bait mix in a minute Right, so now I'm going to run you through my mix um, which I'll be using here on the cat and carp lake um, I want a mix really that's going to attract both cats and carp so to be honest a lot of the baits that you use for either species will attract the other so um, yeah this is what I'm going for I'll show you now what I've got in the bucket already and then I'll show you what I'm adding what I've, so, what I've got is a mixture of uh, crushed um, cell and hybrid boilies also whole and half baits and then there with a load of 6 mil and micro trout pellets uh, I've also just started cubing up some luncheon meat that's in there as well that's obviously for more of a, of a meaty flavor for the catfish so they've got something to hone in on hopefully get their whiskers going and feeling about anyway so let's see what else i'm going to right add. so other things i'm going to add to my mix i've got the most expensive things in there which would be the pellets and the boilies everything else here that i add is really cheap and really good to add to any mix so basically the first one i'm going to add everyone knows this who goes fishing sweet corn so just going to crack open the tin. Some people don't like to use too much, but sweet corn is really easily digestible to the carp. And um, obviously, a lot of small there's a lot of small fish in this lake, and they'll pick up pick up the sweet corn. So, to be honest, it doesn't really matter how much of that I put. In. Just going to put a good sprinkle in. In fact, I've gone the whole way and put the whole tin in. Give it a quick stir around. The good thing about mixing it in these buckets is you can always put the lid on and then give it a good shake afterwards. So that's the plan anyway. Right, the next thing, is I've just started using this when I've been fishing for catfish. I know it works for carp on commercial fisheries. Cat food. Um, really smelly. You can get it, you know, with fish. This one's trout. I've got another one here which is salmon. And uh, yeah, really fishy, really smelly, really oily, really attractive to the fish. Um, and really meaty as well. So I think it I think it helps in drawing the cats in. It's quite hard to get it out of the tin, if you know if you've got a cat. Anyway, yeah, so that goes in. Just smash it out of that tin. It's one tin. I'm going to use both tins because I mean, I'm, I know I'm only here now for till tomorrow evening so I'm gonna go for it I mean I'm gonna be fishing spots that are quite far apart and you know it's not it's not a lot of bait I'll show you at the end it won't be won't be too much bait and really if you're fishing for cats and you get a cat in it's a surprising the amount of bait they can eat so a lot of bait is better for the catfish it draws them in and uh, yeah so give that a good mix it's fine let's put the next tin in this one's with salmon Smash it out of there. At the moment, I've only really baited the swim with, with just a loose scattering of boilies from the chods. I mean, the chod rig doesn't really suit fishing over beds of bait, which is tightly compacted, which is what this will be, because I'll just be balling this or catapulting this in. So the chods will come off and uh, be using different rigs over the top primarily catfish rigs to be honest popped up worms like I used last time and uh, and a bit of other stuff so, so yeah 
that's really meaty now. Re loads of meat in there. Loads to get. Loads to bind it. It's, find the um, the cat meat's quite good as a binder, really. I find it. Got big chunks in there. Draws it all together. Hopefully this will send up a big oil slick as well. Um, there's a the amount of oil that's in here. I'm going to be putting more oil in as well. So. Right, next ingredient we've got is the old uh, rock salt. Um, very good this. Obviously you don't use too much, but it's great. If you want a bag of mix, which is soaking wet, you put some rock salt in, and it'll make, you can make PVA bags out of it, no matter how wet it is. So, um, put some rock salt in. It's important that it is rock salt and not table salt. Really good. Put salt on your dinner, salt in your mix, draws the fish in, makes it more appealing to the fish. So. Got the rock salt in there. Right. So the next thing I'm going to be adding is my additives. So the first one, get it cheap, get it from any supermarket, and that's the fish sauce. You may have seen Kev using it in other videos. Um, it's brilliant. It's basically just anchovy extract, so you can't really get much more fishy than that. So I haven't got much left, so all of that's going in. And it, it does stink. I don't know why you'd have it on your dinner, because it really hums, but okay. The next one, I've got the red krill. Um, fantastic for drawing in predators, fantra well, fantastic for drawing in everything to be honest. Really fishy. Um, good squirt of that, but not too much because it is super strength that one, so you don't want it to overpower your mix. It's quite easy to do that. Give that a good stir. So now that's really oily, really stinky. Ready to go in over my spots. The last thing I'm going to add. A lot of venues, obviously, if they're banned, I've had these now for a little while, and that's the tiger nuts. I'll just show you them. There you go. They're just soaking, soaking in the juices. Uh, absolutely perfect. You can keep them for quite a while as well. They're quite cheap. They're cheap to buy, and uh, they're fantastic. For some reason, the carp, are, the carp love them. So uh, yeah, just a few, not too many, because. They do find it hard to die. Well, they don't really digest them. They eat them and they come back out the other end, either crushed up or or whole. It's not all totally digested. I may be wrong on that, but that's um, what I've what I've heard. So yeah, there we go, and that's the finished mix. I'll show you the mix. There we go. That's the finished mix. Lovely and uh, sticky, wet. <laughs> Um, full of oils, full of attractors, lots of food items in there. Hopefully that'll be enough to draw the carp and the catfish into my swim. Hopefully catch one or the other. So there we go. Ideal. There's my carp and catfish mix that I'm using here at Marchingley. Right then guys, so the trolley against the island is ripped off. Um, got a nice little common here, probably about seven or eight pound. Um, this lake's fishing really well at the moment to be honest. I was only fishing um, on uh, on Saturday for half an hour up in that swim down the other end and I had a carp and same story here just a light scattering of boilies and uh, Charlie over the top and it's, it's ripped off so I'm happy with that there's been a few crashing out in a bit of a different area so I'm probably going to move my other rod to, to that area but yeah it didn't take him long to get on that bait on the island and there we go not as big as the one the other um, day or so ago but yeah nice little little common it's good to keep them um, keep you going in the daytime and then you go all out for the cats at night then if these are gonna feed through the day I mean I'm sure you'd catch them at night probably catch more at night if you uh, if you tried for them but yeah uh, there we go lovely little fish 24 hours to go let's see how we get on Cheers guys.
he's off to uh, fight again another day. Right, so both rods out in this swim now. Fish have been showing in an area just past my buckets there. Um, out across onto that point is where they've been showing. And in the middle, so stuck a chodrick over towards the point on the far side. Stop them reeds there. And yeah, I'm confident of another fish. Put a few more boilies out by the island. They couldn't have eaten the whole lot I put in, I wouldn't think. Well, it's possible. There was a group of fish there, but yeah, I'm confident of a couple more carp before dark, and uh, then hopefully get on the catfish. Right then guys, so it's um, carp number two, uh, well carp number three really, but carp, carp number two for today, um, and it's an absolute belting looking fish, probably about 14 pounds, and uh, yeah, what an absolute stunner, taking on the chod again, it's on the rod that I moved onto the showing fish, so you know, that shows you, you know, even if you haven't put bait in, they're probably feeding on bait that someone's put in before if they're showing. So just put a single chart over onto it, out there for about 20 minutes, and it's ripped off. And this is the result, and it's an absolutely stunning looking mirror. Let's take a look at that. Look at that. It's nice on this side as well, so I'll show you the other side. But uh, yeah, what a cracking fish. That's about 14 pounds. Absolutely made up with that. Brilliant fight as well, came straight to the surface, did a lot of rolling in there. Yeah. Happy with that one, really happy. So yeah. There it's been a lot of activity in the swim. A lot of rolling. Just said it was quite busy here at the weekend. All these swims were taken, so it's, they're probably feeding on bait that's been left over from the weekend. And there's that side for you. Oh. What a fish. Yeah, March and me's been really kind to me. I'll be sad to uh, say goodbye to the place, but uh, unfortunately there's no work up here for me anymore, so I'm going to have to go home and fish the waters back in Devon. But, uh, it's, it's been some real great fishing at this place, and uh, hopefully tonight I'll end it off with a big catfish, but these carp are keeping me more than entertained at the moment. Fantastic. slipping back. Hi then guys, it's completely dark, you can't see a thing, I know you can't see a thing on the camera, but yeah, this is it for catfish. Let's see how we get on. See you in the morning guys. I'll show you um, the photos of the fish through the night if I get any. Let's hope I do. Cheers. Well guys, it's early in the morning and there's my first cat of the session. I know you can hardly see it. But he's there. Look. That's his whiskers. Big fish. I'm just going to weigh him in now saw everything out of him. It's a shame that my camera doesn't have night vision because this is an amazing looking fish but I'll show you the photos in a second. Fantastic stuff. He's there just chilling out on the mat so we'll get him sorted now.
an altogether different fish as you'll be able to see from the photo. It's a bit smaller than the other one, I think. I'm going to weigh him in now. The other one went 23 pounds. Um, so we'll see if he's one way. It's an absolute buzz. Same rig again, same spot, just off the corner of the island. Sorry I can't show you one. As I explained before, I don't have a better, a better count. There's a nice long one. to know that this one is a known fish is, there you go, it's got a tag, as you can see there, that yellow thing here, it's actually a tag, it's been tagged this one at some point in its life, I'm sure the owner or, or uh, people that fished here have recognised this one, yeah, it's taken my popped up worms, it's nearly light now, but yeah, happy with that. Let's slip it back. Let's have a look at that gob. Look at that. Beast of a fish. There we go. Oh, well, good morning, guys. What a night. <laughs> Sorry, I don't really look with it this morning. Absolutely knackered. Um, the rod by the island was having indications literally all night and uh, screamed off with two catfish. Um, one of 23 pound and one of 15 pound, which had actually had a tag in it. So um, that's a bit of a gnome one, that one. So it was good fun. Um, both, both on the worms. And uh, yeah, I haven't, I've been, I was so tired that I uh, haven't switched back to cart rigs yet. I think. To be honest, the spot by the island had so many fish on it last night. I think if you had car rigs out there, you would have had a load of carp as well. And just indications on it all the time, liners. But anyway, it's one of the best bits about it. It's now time for some breakfast. So yeah, I'm going to sit and enjoy this. And I'll catch up with you and change back to car rigs and fish for the rest of the day. Cheers, guys. just off the edge of the willow. Also had a carp off there as well. And uh, yeah, just alongside the island there, good spot. Um, tons of liners and loads of indications. Uh, I put in quite a lot of bait there last night, probably a kilo and a half worth of mixed, mixed stuff. So I think the carp were grubbing out on it. The cats come in and they just are attacking, <laughs> attacking my worms. So yeah, it was good. Epic battle as well. The fish, I zoom back out. It pulled me all the way around this bay, all the way round, past my other rod, which is there, right round the back of that post, because there's a bay around the back of there, that's where a lot of the cats went. This rod here, incidentally, is fishing now over across there, into that bay on the far side. A few fish showing there yesterday, down by those reeds there. So I've just, no one's here, so um, I thought I'd put a bait over there today, just for this morning, see how it goes. Not long left. Um, let's see how we get on. It's a very nice spot, this one. Loads of features, lots of choice of what the fish do. But yeah, that one's going straight out. There. Let's see how we get on. Oh, right, guys, so I've just had another carp out. Sorry I didn't um, film it for you, but um, I had some, someone here with me 
Um, he kindly did the photos for me and the fish was looking a bit stressed so we wanted to get it back. Um, but it was probably about £10. It's ripped off on the island again on the choddy. Just flicked a few boilies around the choddy again. So, to be honest, I think I must have got cleared out for most of my bait last night. So, um, Getting a few liners and stuff on the other rod. Confident of another fish. So I'll show you the next one. Um, I'm going to have to adjust my choddy for the moment. The only trouble with these leaders I've found is that quite often the rubber that um, stops your bead, you find that that often quite will wear away after a while. Um, so you have to replace that. And I'll show you how I do that. How I improvise doing it. Right, so a quick fix I found for if your rubber is weared off or worn off, sorry, your uh, leader, just put a bit of silicon sleeve over there, or sorry, put a bit of um, shrink tube on there. Just try and shrink it with a lighter. Try not to burn your finger whilst you're doing it. Yeah, if you just shrink it with the lighter. Obviously try not to burn your, your hook length or anything. You want to try and set it in the place that you want it to start with because although the bead will pass over the top of it, making it safe, it won't slide very much. Right, so that's on there now. Do that. So you've got your choddy. This one's been through the wars a bit. Had a few fish on this one now. So you've got your bead, sort of sitting there on that on that bit of shrink tubing that I've done to improvise it, and just to make sure that it can still come off. There you go. Your bead's come off. Put enough pressure on it, the bead will come off. So it's still perfectly safe. Just make sure, obviously, if you are going to improvise anything like that, you have to make sure they're still safe. So I just lightly push it on the one end, can't fix it up. In the event that your rig is snagged or anything like that, it's just got to go and the bead's off and then it can run away. So ideal. There we go. That's how I've uh, adapted my choddy so I don't need to keep dying new leaders. Right then guys, that's it, the end of the session. 
Um, it's been a great one as well. Finished with four carp and two catfish. Um, cats up to 23 and a carp up to 15. It's been a fantastic session. Um, probably be my last here, to be honest. Um, as I've got to go back home, looking for work again now. So it's a bit sad to leave the place really. I've had a great time fishing up north. In particularly here, I don't think my time up north would have been so enjoyable if it wasn't for this place. It really is a fantastic venue, so if you, if you live locally or even if you live a little bit further away, definitely come and give it a try. Fantastic carp fishing on offer on the carp lake. This, this lake here gives you plenty of runs and you've just got the amazing catfish and it's on offer as well. Um, it's all really cheap, food delivered straight to your peg, you can park behind your peg. It's all perfect really. There's even a match lake which is absolutely stuffed with fish. So. Yeah, definitely come here and give it a go. Yeah, I've, I'm sure you'll hear a lot more about this place in the future. He's, he's doing everything right here. <laughs> Hasn't overcomplicated it with, with fancy rules or anything. Just respects the anglers and the anglers then in turn hopefully respect him. Um, fantastic place. And, uh, there we go. I'll be sad to leave it but just got to reel the rods in now and that's it. There we go, I'll probably come back for a holiday in the future because it's definitely cheaper now, so come back and do a week and I'll bring you guys with me. So. There we go. So I hope you enjoyed the videos here. I've tried to show you as much as possible in terms of the spots <laughs> and rigs, etc. that I've used to catch the fish here, so yeah. I don't think one's gonna rip off. There's been a few people turn up and there's a lot of pressure on this area now, so I don't think one's going to rip off, so I won't have another one to show you, but there we go. Cheers guys, and I'll see you again in another video back in Devon.